Genshin Impact Tibet Travel Guide Tibet Geographic Special Edition Alice's Mondstadt Diaries Lush sakura trees grew all over this mountain on the northern end of Narukami Island. These sakura all share roots with the largest of them, the sacred sakura, which sits on the mountain's summit. The Grand Narukami Shrine, greatest of the Inazuman shrines, is dedicated to this sakura tree. Little Yai has been the one managing the shrine in recent years. Huh. How she's grown. It's just a shame, really, to think that I can never make her cry again as easily as I used to. Really, I thought that she'd quickly get drunk, start to cry, and start talking all silly. But she drunk me under the table instead. I made a fool of myself in the process and was quite thoroughly mocked for it. Getting made out to be some old woman who got what was coming to her. Bah. In here, I was looking to tease that little girl a bit more, too. I brought a new firework formula to that Naganaharo kid's place. But when he heard me talking about a new medicine that might cure his deafness, he demurred and did not accept it. This kid is ever the conservative about explosives, always diluting them to the point where they cannot cause any obvious physical changes to the environment, and always relying to the combustion of different metals to produce monotonous visual effects. And he only does tests inside his workshop. I mean, come on, where's the fun in that? Eh, <sighs> such a waste. Such a waste. Now, as for his daughter, Yoimiya, now she's an interesting young lady. We collected a lot of sweets during the festivals, and tried all kinds of new formulae out. That was so much fun! And then, we got packed off to a deserted beach by the fire brigade. Something about the new rules with which to keep the peace in Inazuma City, or something similarly silly. We discussed a lot of new ideas, and she even gave me some constructive feedback. A talented kid, this one is. If the paradise I made for Klee also had one of Yoimiya's fireworks performances, that would have been perfect. It's just a shame that the grumpy Shogun kept too close an eye on us. Or else, I'd have helped her improve some of her gadgets, or even spirited her away. This reminds me of the time, not long ago, when I was preparing a medicine that would allow for flight in the Imperial Kitchen. It blew up due to a mistake of mine, injuring a young Tengu. General to the point where her left wing would have needed, say, have a month to recover. I had wanted to help her patch the wound up, but it seems as if she'd been avoiding me ever since. Well, I left her some medicine all the same, just to see how its effect would turn out. After that incident, it seems that person who spends all her time holed up in Tenshukaku had sent some soldiers specifically to watch my every move. I mean, that's a bit much. I even apologized right to her face. But she just won't let up. She was the one who allowed me to conduct experiments in the Imperial Kitchens in the first place, you know? Also, Miss Kamisato declined my idol group invitation for the sixth time running. Ugh, what a disappointment. Tatarasuna is an island chain that is naturally shaped like a ring. The mountains rise to overlook the sea surrounding the large blast furnace in the middle. This is where Inazuma and Jade Steel is produced and endlessly made into the best weaponry into the highfalutin bigwigs of Inazuma, or made from the blood and bones of a defeated god. This place is the Tenryo's Commissioner's pride and joy, and as such, 
He takes extra good care of the workers and technical specialists. I was accompanied during the time of Tatarasuna by a young lady named Kagami Gozen. She seems to be the leader amongst the workers there and has an official shogunate post. Even though she's the Tenryo's commissioner subordinate, she very much looks like an equal in front of the workers. All of them trust and love her. I dare say that their respect for their dispatches might be even greater than what they give the shogun. But Kagami Gozen herself frowns often, very unfriendly looking. The Tatarasuna workers are largely rootless, washed up on these shores by the waves of history. Their many tattoos and working songs set them apart, but also strengthens their mutual bonds. Like the other workers of Tatarasuna, Kagami Gozen's body has scars from high temperature burns from Tatarigami. These might be signs of short-lived or ill peoples in the eyes of outsiders, but here, it is how they identify family. I took the liberty of modifying the Mikage furnace, throwing a few valves and panels into the sea and improving the containment dome, which at present can, at best, be rated better than nothing. I wonder if those engineers from Fontaine will be pleasantly surprised. Old man Kujo might get a little upset from a production going down, but at least the furnace isn't going to go haywire from overheating. And I believe that even in the event of a war, which may soon come, the explosion should not be too large. Large according to my personal standards, of course. Hmm, actually, might my ingenious interventions perhaps prevent war from breaking out at all? Well, I for one would be more than pleased to see the expressions of those astrologers' faces when their predictions come to naught. Ha! <laughs> ah. The clear blue skies over Yashiori Island really is a pleasant sight. Those stodgy Amayuji explain that the Raiden Shogun placed many wards over this place to prevent the corruption that seeps from the remnants of the Serpent God. I'm not good with their religious jargon. As far as I can observe, those lampposts are quite interesting. Although they have appearance of items dedicated to the Electro Archon, the techniques used to make them are quite familiar to me. Oh, would you look at that? This is supposed to be a travel log, not an academic paper. We were warmly welcomed by Washizu, the head of Higi Village. The grilled fish and onigiri were great. Also, that place they call Nazuchi Beach is full of friendly pirates. It's just a shame that I couldn't stay on this island for longer. The mines on the island are busy places indeed, but the equipment they use here is quite backward. Even though the Shogun put all those wards down, blocking off most of the Tatarigami spread, but many miners still have contracted chronic illnesses from prolonged exposure to the influence of those snake bone crystals. The sakura mochi that the Amayuji brought with them are very tasty but they're hardly the equal of the beauties that little Yai makes. I should probably pay a visit to Asase Shrine later. I wonder how that fat cat's been doing lately. I did try to catch it with specially crafted kids the other time, only to be stopped by that killjoy shrine maiden. <laughs>